Every week, millions of people move home. And as it's one of the most stressful things that you'll do in life, you need to get it right. I'm Rebecca Jane, and together with the region's best property experts, we'll be giving you some top tips and expert advice. Shining a spotlight on a different area from across the Midlands and getting to know a little more about our guests and what they look for in a home. Property is ever-evolving and always a fascinating subject. We'll guide you on what you need to know and what you need to look out for here on Midlands at Home. and welcome to Midlands at Home. On this week's show, we're going to be talking DIY and home improvements, as a recent newspaper article said that men claim they lack the confidence when it comes to DIY, with research claiming that men are too lazy to don tools. I'm saying nothing. My guest today is uh, Richard from Tar Choice. Richard, welcome. Thank you. Um, now, this article made me smile. Do you think there's much truth behind it? Um. Probably, yes. I think, uh, <laughs> That's honesty. I think, yeah, I'll definitely come under the net laziness category. Uh, yes, I think that the, the uh, lifestyles, I think people are very busy nowadays. Yeah, you know, it can, very true. You know, especially tiling, it can, be a, you know, it can take a few days to, to actually do and people can't always afford to have the time off work. And also I think it's the pers dependent on the person as well. Some people can turn their hands to every anything, yeah. whereas others are very not very good at practical stuff and yes. sort of you know, steer away from it Absolutely. and, you know, if they've got the money, pay somebody to come and do it. Yeah. I'd personally always recommend getting an expert in to do a job like tiling because like, like any job, it's uh, yes. like any trade, it's, it's, it's what they're good at and that's what they get Leave paid to do. It, absolutely. <laughs> but if you are thinking of, uh, you know, tiling yourself and you want a few tips, then this may help. I've got to admit, Rich, I have never cut a tile in my life. If you're a novice like me, you're just starting out and, you know, you want to give it a go yourself. How do you do the basics of, of cutting a tile? Right, uh, obviously, uh, depending on what tile you have, yep. uh, can dictate what kind of cutter you need. OK. Um, obviously, you've got your electric cutter, which is... a mean machine over there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These are ideal for sort of cutting natural stone and the quartz tiles, the trendy ones. Yeah. Uh, but also, if you've got a sort of cut L shapes, Okay. The tiles, they, these are what you need to sort of help you do that. Uh, or if, you've, if you're just using a ceramic or a porcelain tile and you just need straight cuts, then these this manual cutters okay. are ideal. Right. Yes, and uh, again, there's, there's various sizes. Make sure that you get the right size cutter for the right your size tile. tile. Very yeah. true. Yes. So, so you're going to show us then. So here we go. So we've got, what tile have we got here then? Rich? Yes, again, we're using our very nice simple one. This is our yep. bog standard bumpy white. Yep. Ceramic tile. So. What you'd normally do is you hold it up against the wall where you need to uh, put a mark on where you need to make your cut. Okay. And then... It looks like a guillotine that you get for paper, doesn't it? <laughs> a <laughs> bigger... Yeah, that's what they're saying. You line up your mark with the centre. There's a little mark on there where you just uh, line it up with before yep. you cut. Okay. Once you're happy, that's sort of all level. Nice and straight. Yes, there's a little scoring wheel on the end there. You, you apply that to the end and then just lightly press down. And you can hear that. Yeah, run it to the end of the tile and put your fingers so there. So that's just scored it, has it? That's yeah, what I just you've put done. a score. It scores a glaze. Okay. And then hopefully the tile snaps along that, <laughs> <laughs> along that glaze. So always put it on there just because the tiles do pop up. But okay. we just put yeah. that on there and then gently squeeze down. And the tile. Oh, wow, brilliant. You make it look so easy. It is that easy. Okay. So, <laughs> Excellent. And so, I suppose the thing is with bathrooms, though, and on suites, you can get really tricky corner areas round. You know, especially if you're doing full tiles and you're going round, you know, the loo area, that can be quite tricky, can't it? Doing this. Yes, I mean most unusual cuts. Yeah, I mean a lot of cut, a lot of tilers will actually take the toilet out, for instance, or the pedestal oh, okay. or the basin, Make and then easier. tile. And put it, but if that's yeah. not practical, it is uh, to do a curve cut. It is a lot more difficult. That's where your electric cutter comes into into use again, because what you actually do with that one is. Um, you mark up the tile where you need to cut it, yeah. and then you just make straight line insertions with the electric cutter up to the point of where you need to, and then you just break off the tiles. A bit more complicated, but again, yeah. it, uh, you know that's something that you use the electric cutter for. Yeah. But uh, the manual so cutters really are nice, nice, easy, and quick. And uh, you made it look easy. Shall I have a go? Yes, I think it, it, it might not be too easy, but I'll give it a go, Rich. But we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So, so lining up, yeah. nice and straight. Yeah. Yeah. That, nice that looks good. So. And you're saying just rest it a little bit in case there's any. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Put put the wheel onto the uh, onto the edge of the tile. 
close to the edge as you can, so, so the back. That's there it. we go. That's okay, it. so then I need to score it along. That's it. So just that's it. Just score it to score it along. Right to the end. That's it. And then just lift it up, put that, and then lower it back down there. Oh, no, the moment of truth. It, yeah. so Will it actually? Uh, put your left hand on there. Okay. And then with your right hand, just gently squeeze. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. <laughs> the first time I've ever cut. Yeah, so that's. That was um, quite simple. Yes, uh, and I say nice, nice, nice straight cuts, and that the same cut, you know, it's the same principle for a porcelain tile. Yeah. Uh, they will score and snap the same as well, uh, but it's just you know the main thing is just to get the right size cutter. Yeah. It's daunting, is it, when you start out? If you haven't done it before and you look at anything, oh gosh, I don't want to. You've spent, you know, a lot of money on your tiles, and you want it to be right, yeah. and it's, you know, you don't want to. Yeah, if you're doing get it yourself, <laughs> no, if you're doing it yourself, I mean, there's 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 obviously various products available. There's the sort of more expensive cutters for regular use, which okay. the tilers buy. Yeah. But then we have got sort of economy priced cutters that job dogs can use just as yeah. a, a one-off that they might just put in the garage and never use again. So uh, yeah, there's a you know. If they're coming to branch and explain what they're looking to do, we can advise them as well. And then the next ones. stage, really, then, Rich, is your, is your um, is your grouting. And there's so much choice. I mean, with everything, there's so much choice, isn't there? I mean, you look at all these different um, colour variations that you've got um, with your grouting. And really, when you look at, for example, that that tile there, a lot of these would go depending on the look and the finish that you want. Yes, again, the idea is you you can coordinate your grout to, to either match your tiles or be a contrast. What to do you the find tiles. is most popular in store? A lot of people sort of will, will pick a blend. Yeah. Be a pick, a, pick a grape that will blend. So if you if you have got like a, a natural travertine tile, for instance, they'll pick a sort of beige or a cream yeah. tile as opposed to a white, which could look a bit stark. Yeah. But and again, then you've got your you've got your edging then as well, haven't you? Yes, yes. The edging trim. Uh, with the, you get round or square edge, and that's the purpose of that is round window sills, or if you're only tiling halfway, you can just use these just to finish off. The tops of the tiles. If I put that might, along might, here, you might, might be, be able to. Um, actually, pretty easy to show this one. Yeah. Yeah, the tiles. Oh, there we go. The tiles just slot into there, and then if you've got a windowsill or an external corner, the back of it comes into there, and you get a nice. It's lovely to see that, isn't it? Because that's the sort of the finishing touch there. Yes, yes, yeah. so they're right. Um, they're quite universal, and, and again, there's different. These are relevant different thicknesses to d depending on what the thickness, thickness of the tile. Of tile. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And then how do we then look after it in terms of sealants? We've got some sealants here, haven't we, Rich, over to, to this side? Yes, we, we, again, with a natural stone. Uh, natural stone does require sealing. Um, we usually seal it before and after grouting. Okay. Now, there's different types of sealants. Uh, again, product dependent. We've got a piece of travertine here. So with a travertine, we have a feeler W68. Okay. Now, this is a product which will seal the tile, but yep. won't change the appearance. Okay. Uh, or we do the Feel of Stone Plus, uh, and this is an enhancer. And you put this on the tile, and it actually bring out the colours oh, and lovely. make it a bit darker. So again, we'll uh, do a little again, demonstration. Again, depending for on you. the look, doesn't it? You know, whether you want it just to look as it is, or whether you want to. If you've if you've actually put a colour enhancer, is there any way of going back? Or once it's that colour, it's that colour. It's that colour. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make yeah, sure so. you know what you want beforehand. Then. Yeah, okay. So, so this it, one is the. This is the enhancer. The enhancer. And what actually do with that? You just oh, you can see it instantly, can't you? Yes, it just gets absorbed into the tile. It acts as a protector as well. I'll so just lift that up, and then you can it. see it at home here. You can see instantly that colour. Yes. And because it's natural, different ones are going to lift more than others. And exactly, and it gives you the option again from an aesthetic point of view whether you want it. You know, the the, the natural state colour may blend in better with the tiles, or you might want a bit more. When it's finished. dried, Rich, does it does it go a little bit um, lighter, or is that the it generally colour? stays that that, that okay. colour? Yeah. So this, if you use a W sixty eight, not it will go that colour to begin with, but then as it gets absorbed in, it will dry and it will go back to the basic uh -huh. colour that it started right. out with. Personal preference, isn't it? Like anything, I suppose. Yes, yes. And then once you've once you've grated it in, um, you've got um, you've got the. The option of the grout sealer, which a lot of people use nowadays, especially in the wet areas. Okay. Most people have experienced grout that goes a bit funny coloured, especially on the light colours, the whites oh, and the creams. Okay. Over time, yeah. uh, this is a product that you can actually paint onto the grout once once the job's been finished. Yeah. And that will actually stop the water sticking to the grout and stop the actual mould from forming. Okay. Or if you're using, you know, Does that help with the cracking as well? Because you know you do find that the grout cracks over time, or is that just? No, the grout. Uh, usually, I mean most. I mean the. The grouts that we sell are very good grouts. They're, they're flexible, waterproof, and yeah. antibacterial. So generally, as long as 
the tyres are being fixed correctly in the first place, you won't get you that. Won't get no yeah. problem yet. Cracking grout is normally caused from um, tyres not being fitted properly oh, or the, the, right, uh, the right amount of structural support. I'm not sure I'll be in a huge rush to do it again, but fantastic to learn. Um, Rich, it's quite daunting, isn't it, thinking of perhaps tiling a room yourself. What yes. tips would you give to our viewers to get it right? Uh, basically, just to make sure that the materials and the products that you're purchasing to go with the tiles, if you're doing it yourself, are yeah. appropriate to the job. Obviously, okay. the staff in store can give give you the, the information and the details yeah. to make sure that whatever product you're purchasing, whatever tile, it's a natural stone or a porcelain or a ceramic, uh, and what size it is, that you get the right material and tools if you're doing it yourself uh, for the job, whether it's adhesive, grout, trims, thicknesses and all the sealants that you may need. Yeah, yeah that's it, you don't want to rush it, do you? So no. well, you're going to stay with us, aren't you? Because after the break, we'll be looking at underfloor heating plus this week's spotlight areas to see you in a few minutes. This week's spotlight area is the Jewellery Quarter. The Jewellery Quarter is an area of Birmingham situated in the south of the Hockley area of the city centre. There is a population of around 3,000 people and this unique area dates back more than 250 years and is still home to over 500 jewellery businesses. A designated conservation area with over 200 listed buildings, it has been described by English Heritage as a unique historic environment in England and national treasure, which has few, if any, parallels in Europe. Historically, the Jewellery Quarter has been the birthplace of many pioneering advancements in industrial technology. At its peak in the early 1900s, the Jewellery Quarter employed over 30,000 people. However, due to foreign competition and lack of demand, the industry declined throughout the 20th century. For two centuries, the Jewellery Quarter existed as a trade and manufacturing area. The advent of shops opening to the public is a recent phenomenon, with the majority of retail outlets springing up since the 1970s, and now the area is widely known as a place for both the trade and public to browse and buy the finest jewellery products at the keenest prices. Whether you're looking for diamonds, pearls, engagement rings to clocks, you'll find lots of choice from some of the leading jewellery experts. The Jewellery Quarter is Europe's largest concentration of businesses involved in the jewellery trade, which produces 40% of all the jewellery made here in the UK. It is also home to the world's largest assay office, which hallmarks around 12 million items a year. As well as being a hub for creative businesses, the Jewellery Quarter is also being transformed into an urban village, with contemporary apartments being built from prominent historic buildings alongside brand new builds. It's the home to a community of people, from first-time buyers and students to professionals and established entrepreneurs. There are over 30 restaurants and delis with food from right across the world and a great cafe culture for those who like to eat out. There is also a great selection of gastro pubs that are bustling at the weekend. Local amenities include an express supermarket, post office, pharmacy, health centre and a choice of gyms. The Jewellery Quarter also contains Birmingham's last remaining Georgian Square in the tranquil surroundings of St Paul's, where you'll find some of the restaurants, bars and galleries. Living in the Jewellery Quarter, you will certainly feel part of a greater community. And with more and more people wanting to live in this part of Birmingham city centre, property tends to go quick. With its heritage and expanding, thriving business community, easy access for public transport links and local amenities and restaurants, it's clear to see the advantages of living in the jewellery quarter. And of course, as ladies can never have too much jewellery, can we? Now, before the break, we were talking about tiling. Uh, now we're going to take a little look at something that I think a lot of us in our homes aspire to have, which is underfloor heating. How lovely to have. It's a luxury, isn't it, underfloor heating? Yes, yes, it's definitely a luxury. Um, but over the last five, six years, it's been, the price has come down. It's a lot more affordable now. Yeah. Uh, people are tiling more rooms. Before it used to just be bathroom or kitchen. Now you've got conservatories, people are tiling the living rooms. Yeah, they're not using so much carpet, are they? Like in hallways nowadays, you are seeing a lot more people thinking more practically and having a hard floor as opposed to carpet. So yeah. That's it, yes. And the main down, you know, drawback a lot of people say when you speak to them in the stores about the tiles is oh, the cold. Yes, very true. Yeah, so it's very practical now yeah. to put the heating down. And again, because it's there for 10 years, 
it's usually worth the extra costs because over time you get the benefit of it. And also, if ever you come to sell your house, it's a great selling point because yeah. people walk into your house, you show them a nice... Oh, it's lovely, floor. isn't it? That's yeah, it, yeah, it's a great nice. selling point and it can, it can actually help it can actually help you sell your house as well as a like little gadget, yeah, you know, especially people, true. a lot of gadget people around there. Yeah, the day, so. definitely. Well, if you are considering having underfloor heating in your home, then take a little look at this. So, Rich, talk us through what we've got here then. Right, this is uh, obviously under tile heating. Yeah. Um, this is the mat version. They come in uh, 50 centimetre wide mats, and then depending on the square meterage, it's sold in square metres. Okay. Depending on the square meterage, that dictates the length. Uh, that it comes in. Looks like it's all ready to go, which is great. All yes, this all is uh, if you ideally you want a, a perfectly square area okay. um, where you can sort of lay it down and all you do is roll, roll it out where you want it and then flip it back and then come back on yourself okay. uh, to sort of cover the area that you need. So you just take it as far as you want and then you just cut into the mesh, making sure obviously you don't cut the wires. Yes, <laughs> you don't, you don't want to do wires, that. <laughs> and then flip it over okay. and then just come back the other way. So it's a, it's a nice easy way of doing it. Before you start laying it, you just put some primer on the floor first of all. Okay, and floor then, nice and even. That's it, yes, obviously yep. you prep the floor um, properly first of all. And then once you've, got, once you've dry laid it exactly where you want it, all you do is just peel off the double the tape, double back tape, okay. and then just press that down. That just holds it in place, and then you literally just tile straight over the top of it with your adhesive, and then plonk your tiles on top. Brilliant! You make it sound so simple. <laughs> what have we I got wish. here? <laughs> uh, this exactly the same wire, uh, but Gotta this do is it yourself. yes, basically it's a direct wire system, and the this is for areas if you've got like fiddly little bits to okay. get in, in yeah. and out of. It is more time consuming to put down. But it up once it's there, and it's up. You know, it literally works the same. And not all rooms are the same, are they? So you, you do sometimes get those really awkward areas and those awkward spaces. So at least you've got you've got the best of both worlds. That's it, yeah. And the wires are available. These are one fifties. The, the, the uh, wires are available in a three hundred, a two hundred as well. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and it just uh, it's just a you get more heat. So there's, there's two options. Right. You've got one fifty watt or a two hundred watt to go for. There's, there's not much difference in the price really, but it just depends on how much heat you want to get. Yeah. The 200 watt, if you want to use it as a heat source, the 200 watt's a good one to go for, but if you just want to sort of take the edge off the tiles so it's nice and pleasant to walk on, yeah. then the 150 is good enough for that as well. And then this is obviously how you operate the temperature, because that's another thing to, to go on to, you've got with the, these your thermostats. Yes, yes, um, uh, with warm up, uh, they've got three different uh, stats out at the moment. Um, this is the Tempo stat, which yeah. is your sort of basic one, if you okay. like. That's just generally you can your still program. Yeah, you can program it on off uh, different times, four oh, times great. a day. Um, and then you move up to the three. This is a bit more of a iPhone design. Yeah, it's touch, very cool. <laughs> yeah, touch, touch screen. Uh, I say very modern looking. And again, whereas this one you program it to switch on and off. Yeah. This one just you just adjust the temperature. Uh, the theory being that when you when your heating goes off altogether. You use up more energy heating it back up to temperature. Oh, I see. So the idea with these ones is that when you when you don't want it in use, it just lowers down to sort of 10 degrees rather than off altogether, uh, really, yeah. and then it pops back up to 25 degrees or whatever your operating mm -hmm. heat is, uh, whenever you want it. You uh, might want to put that one up high, or you can see the kids having a great time. Yeah, definitely. And <laughs> um, warm, so yeah, so brilliant. Yeah. Okay, so um, we've got the, our our thermostats here. And um, what about? Because you kind of think, well, what if something goes wrong? Does anything ever go wrong with them? Because they're underneath the tile, so you can't access. Yeah, them. I mean, that, um, in sort of 15 years plus of dealing with the product, I've never had any issues with the mats yeah. uh, at all. There's no moving parts in them, so once they're laid and they're working, the adhesive is over the top. It's covered by a yeah. solid tile. There's not really anything that can go, that can go can wrong go with it. Wrong, really? So the, the products come with a lifetime guarantee, and as I say, I've never had any Happy any days. issues as long as it's been fitted. Uh, just going quickly, going back to the stats, there is yeah. the the 4E stat now which has come out, which is touchscreen the same as that, but you can actually control that from your mobile phone. It's got Wi-Fi wow, built in, so you can actually tablet. Good. You can program it if you want your way home and you want to switch it on. Oh, you can. how nice! <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> what a so luxury! That, that's a top one out there, and uh, and it's all. It's all regulated by a probe that comes in the stat, and you literally link that up to your stat. Yeah. The probe goes into the floor, and that's what monitors the temperature. Oh, very clever. And um, yeah, these ones are very energy efficient as well. Isn't it amazing how technology has come on? It's just fantastic what, what products are available now. Yes. And, yeah. and the different ranges, I suppose, depending on budget, depending on what. That's it, yes. I mean, we, you know, we can do the toilet eating now for a small bathroom. It starts out at about £99. Wow. Uh, obviously, it's area dependent, yeah, the larger the area, the more it's going to cost. Yeah. But again, the running costs 
um, are, are quite low as well. You can eat your bathroom for less than 10 pence a day. Gosh, uh, that's yeah. based on sort of having it on four hours, a couple of hours in the morning, a couple of hours at the night. But obviously, the larger the area, the more energy the more, it does yeah, use. Of course, but what's going to cost? The other thing that it was in, a, I think it was an article recently. There was uh, they said that the gas levels at some, you know, gas isn't going to last forever. Yeah. And there's plans to build new power stations and so forth. And with solar panels, the electric heating is becoming quite popular because some people are thinking ahead. Yeah. Because the, your tiles can be down for ten years. That's it. What if gas yeah. prices go up or it runs out or you've got yeah, the, good you know, point. and if you mm. have solar panels. You could be using that energy from your solar panels to actually heat your floor in as well, so yeah, you're not going to energy costs. Very clever stuff indeed. Yeah. <laughs> it certainly is clever stuff. It's it's a real luxury, isn't it? Are there any brands that we should look out for? What's the sort of would you say the leading provider or yes. one of them? Well, obviously we deal with warm up as you could see from the boxes. Yeah. Um, they're they're based worldwide. They're a massive company. They've been going for years and years. We've used them all all the way through uh, since we've had the business, and it's been. We've never had any problems with it. Uh, they're very dependable. The backup service when you need it is excellent as well. And I think that th there are other alternatives on the market. Yeah. Uh, but you do get what you pay for. Yeah, of course. You know, and, and you want it to last. You want to be able to put it down. You don't want to be, if you're moving house, you know, you have to change all your floor and it's there, it's down, it's going to be. I mean, this can last, what, 10, 20 years and so on. You can keep going. Yes, yes, <laughs> as, as, long as, as long as your tiles are there. Exactly. So as long as the tiles are there and that's, uh, that, that, you know, that, That'll be there working and operating as uh, as good as as good as day one. Fantastic. We certainly made us think about, you know, I'm going to go home and plan my, my bathroom, the kitchen, <laughs> the hallway, change the whole lot. Well, thank you for joining us. No problem at all. See you soon. Thank you. I uh, look forward to seeing you next time for more on Midlands at Home. You take care. <laughs>